Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a table of contents and a table of figures in Microsoft Word 2010. So, uh, the first thing I'll do is show you how to create a table of contents because that's the more common thing. Table of contents is something that you would insert under the references tab. All right, and that's typically going to go at the beginning of our document. So, if I go to the beginning of my document and I need a new page before the beginning, I can just insert a page break so I can go insert or page layout break so I can just do control enter for a page break now I've got myself a blank page and people I've seen this a million times people go up to this spot right before the page break and they say I want to insert a table of contents I'm not gonna make a big deal out of formatting I'm just gonna pick the first one um, all right and I get this message saying something about you don't have anything in your table of contents you didn't do anything wrong not really. So there's two ways to do this. There's the there's the mark your entries and then put uh, create the table of contents or create the table of contents and fix it. I've created a blank table of contents. Let's fix it. So if I scroll down through my document, I need to make some decisions about what do I want to show up in my table of contents and what do I not want in my table of contents. There's essentially two ways that you can mark things for your table of contents. I have that blank table of contents because I didn't mark anything. But if I click on introduction, presumably I would want that in my table, you can apply the heading one style. All right, it's, it's kind of ugly, but now the fact that it is heading one does imply that it's going to be in my table of contents. Clinical study one, let's put a heading one on it. And I'm just going through and I'm finding all my headings. Notice I don't have to select all the text, right? This is a paragraph style, it's a linked style, so it's gonna apply and heading one heading one right this is getting kind of boring it's there's no more to it than this results let's call that a heading one study one results i'm going to call this a heading two and you'll see what that looks like you can see visually what it looks like you look at results it's a little bolder a little darker it looks different and it's going to look different in our table of contents this is kind of ugly oh good it grouped it with the paragraph heading two and conclusion, I'm going to call that a heading one. Right, and that is essentially my document. Now, if I press Control Home or however you'd like to scroll to the beginning of your document, you'll notice that I still have a blank table of contents, just like I did in the first place. You'll also notice that once you click in your table of contents, you've got this option to update table. I click update table, and bam, there is my table of contents. Right, so it's not a difficult thing to do. You just need to understand that Word, while it's pretty smart, it's not smart enough to know what you want in your table of contents. And here you can see the relevance of the heading one, heading two. Right, heading one just means they're all indented on a certain level. Uh, heading two is slightly more indented. While we're at it, just in the interest of maybe at some point you might be asked to do this, Notice that if I click on this here, you can see that the heading one is applied. The other way to mark things for your table of contents is on the references tab. And this, in the table of contents group, there's this add text button. You notice how level one is checked. This is similar to heading one, heading two, heading three. If you mark things in this fashion, it will show up in your table of contents. You can also tell things not to show up in your table of contents here as well. Uh, that concludes my lesson on how to create a table of contents. But since it's so similar, let's also do a table of figures. Right, I'm going to say table of figures goes between the beginning of my document and the table of contents. So I'm going to do a page break to create a new blank page. And I'm going to go right here, right in front of the page break. I'm going to insert a table of figures, which is right here. I have some options. I'm not going to worry about those. You've got a few different styles that you can choose from. I'm just going to go generic. No table of figures found or no entries, I guess, for the table of figures found. This should be a common theme, kind of similar to the one before. Uh, if you haven't messed around with table of figures, it's basically a table of contents for the images in your document. And so here's an image, and I might want this image to show up in my, ta in my table of figures, so I need to mark it. Now, a common mistake, people go to picture tools, and they're like, oh, how do I mark it? Well, you're not going to mark it there. You're going to mark it on the references tab. And what you want to do is you want to insert a caption. All right, figure one is not really negotiable. You're going to leave that there. You can change it, but that's making things harder than it needs to be. If you wanted to change that, you could change it like that. I'm just going to leave it as figure one. I'm going to say like uh, vials or something, I, I guess. And you notice now I get a caption below the image. And you're thinking, oh, okay, why would I do that? You'll see. Let's insert another caption. We'll call these beakers. 
and notice how it automatically calls it figure two. That goes from top to bottom of my document. Things are gonna number themselves automatically. Let's do another caption and this will be test tubes. All right, I've set captions on my images. Now let's go check out our table of figures, which is here. Nothing found, guess what? Uh, we need to update this and we can update it here or you can also right click and update most things. I update and it now tells me the page number of the various figures. That is table of contents and table of figures. You see they have a lot more in common than you might have thought. One of the other things, which I kind of will do right now, notice the table of figures does not have a title, so you probably use need to put a title on that. Something like that. And guess what? We might want to have that in our table of contents as well. I could have called this example over or not. Just for fun, let's go add text on this guy and make it level one. And that, I th I, okay, it took it. So let's update our uh, table of contents, entire table, and there's my table of figures. Sure, it doesn't look very fancy. Uh, I could fancy it up if I like, or how about just change it to heading one. That concludes our lesson. Thanks for watching.